on the right or the left? Uh, Chris is normally on the left. Or on the right. <laughs> different in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cowboys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Lights make us look blue. My break. So I'll, I'll turn to you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third uh, press availability from the Alaska House Majority Coalition. Uh, today is the 15th day of the session. We're into our third week of action. Uh, certainly a lot more going on with uh, our standing and special committees, hearing legislation, um, as well as uh, acting as uh, budget policy, budget uh, subcommittees. A couple things to note before I turn things over to uh, the Majority Leader Tuck. Um, we're expecting on Wednesday, actually that is tomorrow, to have the resolution that supports the King Cove Road um, on the House floor. So I'm very eager to, uh, to have that take place. Um, I want to uh, commend Representative Tarr and her work on uh, bringing attention to the issue of equal pay between men and women in Alaska. And that's obviously something that uh, we can and do more to ensure equal pay for equal work. And um, with it, uh, Majority Member Tuck. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, our coalition is concerned about the, these unsustainable oil tax payments that we're making back to the oil industry. Um, I'm really proud that our Resources Committee is taking action, taking charge on this. Uh, they're taking a broad-based approach um, and uh, tackling this issue from, by hearing from all sides of, of, of uh, the issue. And so yesterday they had the Department of uh, Revenue uh, present in front of the committee talking about our oral tax uh, uh, system. Uh, today and tomorrow we actually expect to hear from the oil executives and hear their perspective and then on Friday they're going to be taking up Robin Brenna who is an oil and gas attorney. Uh, so they're taking a broad perspective. Um, we have six brand new members on that committee and if we're going to do something that's durable, uh, something that's long lasting, uh, we've got to make sure that we do it right. And to do that right, we've got to make sure that everybody gets educated. So I'm very proud of our Resources Committee from taking this broad, fresh approach and uh, looking at our tax system. And we have with us as well two of our members from the Finance Committee, Representative Scott Kawasaki from Fairbanks and Representative Jason Gren from Anchorage. So we'd like to uh, bring them into the discussion. Representative Kawasaki, good morning. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the uh, House Finance Committee has been diligently working on the budget. Um, we're almost through the overview process, and many of our subcommittees are meeting uh, with the new standing committees to look at programmatic level changes. Uh, those programmatic level changes will result in um, looking at the mission and deciding whether that program um, needs to be eliminated, uh, needs to be modified, or quite frankly needs to be enhanced. Uh, so it's a new new process that we're undertaking in the House and it seems to be working um, right at this at this time. Um, you know what what makes this really difficult is that over the last several years we've had a huge huge budget deficits. Um, we've also uh, as a legislature been able to cut spending down radically um, nearly 44 uh, percent over the last two years, uh, three years um, when it comes to just general funds. Um, what also is difficult is that uh, in a, even in the Senate majority Republicans new poll, um, many folks, 50% uh, believe that spending is about right or too low, uh, and 43% think it's too high. 
when it comes to K-12 education, it seems like uh, overwhelmingly uh, the Senate majority poll once again says that 63% uh, think it's too low um, or just about right, and only 18% think that education spending is too high. Um, these are really challenging times that we face uh, with this huge deficit, um, and the public is watching. And so we will have uh, we will have a diligent discussion in the Finance Committee after closeouts. Representative Grant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Grant in District 22, proudly serving uh, south side of Anchorage. Uh, this last election cycle, I was a first-time candidate, now I'm a, a first-time first -time legislator. Uh, but during that election cycle, uh, I, I really ran on two things talking to my district. One was to be a part of a team that's going to uh, face these uh, fiscal challenges head-on and, and to set up Alaska's future in, in a bright way. Uh, but also, I heard a lot about people wanting to restore the trust they have in their elected officials uh, down here in Juneau. And uh, so one of the first things I did was, um, a as a newly elected official, I wanted to uh, start that conversation. And so I introduced uh, two bills, uh, HB 44, uh, which uh, creates a concise list of uh, potential conflicts of interests for legislators, and then HCR1, which is actually changes to the uniform rules uh, that will allow us as legislators to vote if uh, a, someone is allowed to abstain from voting. And um, really, I think uh, we've had great response uh, from the public. I think uh, Alaskans were just kind of tired of the status quo when, it, when regards to our conflict of interest. Alaska is the only state uh, in, in America that uh, allows for one person to object and uh, have, that, have that one legislator uh, who rises for a conflict to vote. And I think um, anything that we can do to add transparency, anything we can do as legislators to add to public trust, um, we need to have those discussions. And I think this is a, a great time to be doing that. Very good. I'd like to open things up for questions. Uh if you would please identify yourself as you ask your question. Uh, Shauna Crondall, Alaska Education Update. My question is on transparency. Um, in one of the subcommittees last week, the first subcommittee or the first meeting of that subcommittee, the chairman announced that they weren't required to put documents in basis. And in addition, um, recordings of subcommittee hearings are not being put in basis. Um, how does that reflect on your statements that you will be transparent? And um, do the uniform rules need to be changed so that it's official that these things will be done and not just um, unofficial from year to year? Well, I just want to say that the, the budget subcommittees are subcommittees of the Finance Committee. And uh, it's. Uh, it takes a lot of resources to be able to have our committees transcribed and traditionally the budget subcommittees just haven't been transcribed and put on the record although they are recorded and they are uh, part of the process and the way that we're trying to make that more easy to follow is to make that budget subcommittee part of the the, the regular committee as far as documents being um, um, allowed um, I think that that's going to be probably on uh, per per whoever's running the, the budget subcommittee if they have the resources to be able to do that. But uh, right now, Ledge Affairs, it says that we just, we, they don't have the resources. They don't even have the resources to transcribe our floor sessions. They're recorded, but they're not transcribed. The only ones that we have is our special committees and our standing committees. So how is that transparent when the public is, how is that transparent when the public is listening to a subcommittee hearing and they don't have access to the documents that are being discussed? And I don't know what documents that they don't have access to, and that's news to me. Um, most everything that we have is right there, readily available, um, and you can get any of those documents from the Finance Committee. So I don't know which documents that are not available. I'm sorry, I'm just not aware of it. Well, and, and like Majority Leader Tuck alluded to, we do our best. I mean, uh, there's 14 state agencies out there, there's many standing committees, special committees, all holding hearings, hearings simultaneously. Uh, we do our very best to get those documents online and to have uh, um, uh, as much exposure as we can to the subcommittee process that heretofore, going back you know, well into time, these uh, subcommittee hearings took place at 7 in the morning sometimes, 7 at night sometimes, uh, well out of the purview out of anybody who might be uh, you know, the, uh, f uh, following the hearings. So we're doing our best. Uh, if there's any instances out there where uh, we can do better, we're certainly going to capitalize on that and uh, um, really appreciate uh, you bringing that forward. Um, Steve Quinn of Bloomberg, uh, this is for the speaker. Um, there's a bill on Pebble Mine uh, being heard today. Uh, I'm curious on, 
How is it you didn't um, become the sponsor of this bill? That's your district. Well, it's, it's a bill that's uh, been around for a few years. Um, and the sponsor of the bill has expressed interest in this for a number of years. And uh, I think it's not lost in anyone that the Pebble Mine is very controversial out in southwest Alaska. I can tell you from first-hand knowledge that more people uh, oppose it by greater margin than they do support it. Um, and I don't think that the change anytime soon, I think the bill going forward, well, like any bill in committee, really go forward on its own merits. And uh, I don't sit on the fisheries committee. And uh, when the bill comes forward, uh, should it come forward uh, to any committee that, uh, that I sit on or to the House floor, um, I'm going to take a, look, a careful look at it. Uh, but you know my position on the mine. I put fisheries first. I put the health of the habitat out there first. And I've never deviated from that. Um, Matt Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Good morning. Um, uh, another question on subcommittees. Um, I'm curious. It, it seems like the legislature has never um, held subcommittee meetings on the legislature's budget uh, with the same sort of regularity and intensity as uh, executive branch agencies. And I'm wondering why that hasn't happened. Why it, and why why it isn't happening this year. I can, I can just take a, a quick swipe at that. You know, the, the first thing that, that we did as, uh, as a new majority is to um, cap salaries within, uh, within our own uh, body in the House. Um, we uh, changed the fees for the lounge. Um, we're looking at other pieces of legislation, perhaps, um, that will address um, our own house. Because I think we need to, as a legislature, um, show to the public that we're also making substantial cuts. Um, the meetings that are highlighted, I, I know that Representative, I think Representative Seaton is the chair of, of the legislative, legislative budget. Um, those will be public. Those will be noticed. Those will be available for the public to watch uh, online. Um, and the documents, I do believe, are going to be available for the press in advance of the meetings. Um, all of our subcommittee content, it will be online if we can, if we can make sure that it gets scanned in advance of meetings. Is there, is, there a good yeah. reason that, um, is there a good reason that the legislature shouldn't have to go through, you know, the same sort of lengthier process for its budget and have to sort of do the same level of defense um, of its spending as the executive branch agencies? I mean, I, I think it's. I think it. I think we do. Uh, and I, again, I think uh, we will have meetings uh, on the legislative budget. Uh, and again, they will be public, and uh, you will know what we're doing uh, within within the legislative budget. The other thing to say is that uh, because it is one of the smaller agency budgets, uh, it um, you know it, it tends to get a little bit less scrutiny. But certainly, our caucus has really led on the idea of being fiscally prudent under these fiscal constraints. Do you, do you think that your guys' process this year will be um, any different than it has been as far as, like, I mean, usually I think it's just one subcommittee meeting at the very end when things are decided on. Do you, do you know if it's going to be different this year? But well, one thing on that is that our budget is very simple in comparison to, let's say, Department of Administration. So it's easier to get through. It's easier to understand, and it's not really difficult. So. Um, so uh, we, we, we really want to spend time on the things that are difficult as we go through this and, uh, and get the easy stuff off the table. Not to say that uh, um, cuts or reductions aren't going to happen. They are going to happen. Um, they're going to be happening for next year. But for this year, with the new majority that we have now, we're already taking actions on ourselves and, and limiting the budget. Travel is not going to be what people have seen in the past. Travel is going to be very limited. Our memberships are going to be limited.